What's going on everybody? This is Brian from sneakerfollows.com. Recap of the news, we got a special weekend upload. I really wanted to hit the three uploads this week and we've had some pretty exciting news over the last several days. Now, before I break that down to you guys, if you have a second, like always, greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the red button below. Now, the highlight of this video, the Air Jordan 3 Fire Red with Nike Air branding is rumored to return in 2022. Now, I'm going to talk a lot more about that shoe later on in the video. Also from Jordan brand, we have more photos of the Air Jordan 1 High OG Heritage, as well as the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Georgetown. Also, I'm going to break down how the government is trying to pass a law for individuals to use bots. That's right, most of us have battled bots on a weekly basis, trying to get the latest shoes that come out and it's really hard to win against them. Other brands in this video includes Nike and Adidas. And now without wasting too much more of your time, let's jump into the news. Over the next couple weeks, we have several Yeezys to look forward to if you're a fan of the line. And one of those is the Yeezy Slide Ochre. Currently, this pair is scheduled to release on December 13th for 60 bucks. The next pair is the Yeezy Foam Runner MX Sand Gray. Now, I'm not going in any particular order. I'm definitely not going by the release date, more so what I feel is more popular than the others. And this pair is scheduled to release on December 11th. The retail price will be 80. Originally scheduled to release on November 29th, the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Compact, known as Slate Blue, has a new release date. So if you're interested in grabbing this pair, they'll drop on December 6th for 220. Last up for the release dates is the Yeezy 700 V3 Copper Fade. Now, this pair is decent. I think I kind of like it just because overall I like the model. And currently, the pair is scheduled to debut on December 10th for 200 To be honest, I am not a huge fan of Yeezys. I think some models are nice. For example, the Yeezy Boost 350 V2. But the colorways, they're always simple or repetitive. So they really don't excite me. However, this pair I'm actually kind of feeling. This is the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Dazzling Blue. Now, there's not much to the shoe, but the blue that is used on the side stripe is enough, in my opinion, where I actually want to buy them. The color blocking is similar to the three pairs that dropped on Black Friday 2016. Constructed with black prime knit across the upper, Dazzling Blue runs across the side stripe that extends on to the hill. And then of course we have the SPLY 350 branding across the side. The last detail is an enclosed full length boost midsole in black. Unfortunately, we don't have a specific release date. Currently they are expected to debut spring 2022. I've heard in April, but that's not confirmed. The retail price is 220. On to Nike, and one pair that has had several release date changes is the Nike Dunk High Moon Fossil. The pair is a women's exclusive release. I believe they also had two different release dates in November, and then we had a release date set for December 7th. However, that date has been delayed, and the new release date is December 28th. Hopefully there isn't any more release date changes, that of course if you're a fan of the shoe, but I wouldn't doubt if another one took place, making this a 2022 release, and the retail price will be 110 Initially leaked months and months back, we now have a potential release date for the Nike Dunk Low Championship Goldenrod. So most people just call this shoe Goldenrod. Nike's calling them Championship Goldenrod. And the reason I say potential release date is because we are seeing so many release date changes. I actually really like this pair. It does resemble the Varsity Maze Dunk High that dropped back in December 2020. I was lucky enough to purchase that pair. I might go after this one. I'm not entirely sure, but the release date is December 16th. Again, it's possible we could see another release date change and the retail price will be 100. 
In 2022, Nike SB will have multiple collaborations. One of those will be with Polaroid. Now, Polaroid is best known for its instant film and cameras. I'm sure everybody knows that. And the model that they're going to use is the SB Dunk Low. Here is the first look. And to go over the pair, they come with black leather across the base. White hits the tongue branding, heel, midsole, and the rubber outsole. Borrowing the colors from Polaroid's logo, we have rainbow layered swoosh logos on the panels, which consist of red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Those same shades land on the insoles, along with Nike SB and Polaroid branding. Finishing the look, we have more co-branding, which lands on the lace tips and heels. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not a huge fan of the shoe. I don't like the white across the midsole and outsole, especially the heel. I feel like there's just too much white. Maybe if it had a black outsole or something. But if you like them, that's cool. Don't let me discourage you. And currently, they are expected to release sometime in April 2022 for 110 well, this news has been going around quite a bit over the last several days. I've seen it across YouTube, different media outlets, IG, and it's the new Stopping Grinch Bots Act of 2021. Well, I shouldn't say new because originally it was introduced in 2019. It didn't pass then, but now the Democrats have brought the bill back trying to make it pass for 2021 in time for the holiday season, which I highly don't think it's going to happen. I'll get more onto that in a moment. And just to clarify, I'm going to read an article as well as read from the official bill a little bit, just so I have all the facts clear. I heard other people explain this, that it wouldn't be for Nike or sneakers, that it would just be for toys, video games, stuff like that. And that isn't true. I'm going to read a little bit from this article from CNET, and it reads, A group of Democratic lawmakers from the House of Senate on Monday introduced the Stopping Grinch Bots Act in an attempt to curb the trend of bots scooping up entire inventories of the hottest holiday gifts online and selling them at often ridiculous inflated prices. These so-called Grinch bots make it virtually impossible to get popular gifts online at retail prices forcing online shoppers to overpay or miss out. Paul Tonka of New York, along with Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, Charles Schrumer of New York, and Ben Ray Luan of New Mexico introduced the bill. Now, I apologize if I pronounced any of their names. Moving forward, these bots don't just squeeze consumers, they pose a problem for small businesses. Local retailers and other entrepreneurs trying to ensure they have the best items in stock for their customers. Tonka said in a release, our Grinch Bots Act works to level the playing field and prevent scalpers from sucking hardworking parents dry this holiday season. I urge my colleagues to join me in passing this legislation immediately to stop these Grinch Bots from stealing the holiday. On a side note, bots have been year round. It's not just a holiday thing. I mean, us in the sneaker community, we try to get a release and we battle bots on a weekly basis. So yeah, it's cool that they're trying to do something now for those that are anti-bot. But at the same time, this is nothing new. Grinch bots leverage sophisticated software algorithms to execute automatic actions that can be set to constantly monitor and scrape sites for info on things like prices and inventory stock to snatch up products well before any human would realistically have a chance. The bots also bypass security measures put into place by online retailers specifically intended to curb such practices. Some of the same lawmakers introduced the same bill in 2018, but that didn't end up going anywhere. It remains to be seen whether this go around will be any different. So they said it was in 2018. I believe they didn't vote on it until 2019. And that's when it didn't pass. Now, a lot of people mentioned that this is for just video games, toys, and tickets. Tickets, they already passed the bill, which took place, I believe, in 2016. But the reason why people think it's only toys and video games is because of the media outlets. They use those two as an example. The video game industry as a whole is a lot bigger than the sneaker industry. I believe that there's a lot more people that play video games than collect sneakers. Also, you have a lot of parents trying to get their kids the latest gaming system and they're not able to. So that's kind of why media outlets steer in that direction. Now, I went over the bill on the Congress website. So it's the official government website. And to read a summary of what this bill is about, 
This bill makes it unlawful to use automated tools, i.e. bots, to intentionally bypass a website's security measures in order to purchase and resell its products or services in interstate commerce. It makes no mention of video games, sneakers, or anything, but this is more so a blanket statement for any product. So if you're a fan of Pokemon cards and you use a bot, this may affect you. Sports cards, pretty much anything. I also read over the full document and they didn't make any mention on a particular product, nothing that was left off the list. And then just to clarify a bit more, there's a document on Tonka, I believe that's how you say it, his profile on the government website. And there's three steps that they're going after. And there's three steps that basically lets us know what they're going after. So the first one is prohibits manipulative workarounds that allow bad actors to use bots to circumvent control measures designed to protect real consumers. Number two, makes it illegal to knowingly circumvent a security measure, access control system, or other technological control or measure on an internet website or online service to maintain the integrity of posted online purchase order rules for products or services, including toys, and would make it illegal to sell or offer to sell any product or service obtained in this manner. Number three, allows the Federal Trade Commission to treat these abusive workarounds as prohibited, unfair, or deceptive acts or practices and take action against the bad actors. Now, going through all these documents, I didn't see what type of punishments. Usually, it would be a fine. The fines would be hefty. And before everybody gets their hopes up about this, for one, it still needs to pass. I couldn't find any information on when it'll be brought to the House of Representatives for it passing. I believe that's the route it goes. Sorry, I dropped out in high school, so I don't know the full background of this. But even if this passes, first they need to implement the system. They need to have very, very descriptive rules because everything I read, if they don't make it nice and tight, then autofill could be considered a bot. Now, do I think that's actually a bot? No, but you just need to cover all the bases. Now, once that happens, how are they going to stop bots? Most of them use proxies. You can't actually track them. I've heard that there's ways to spoof your address. So you can order, let's say 10 shoes from a website. It looks like it's going to 10 different addresses, but they all wind up in the same location. As much as I would like everybody to have a fair chance to buy whatever sneaker it is, I just don't think this is a realistic bill. I don't think there's a way to combat it. And I feel that the government is more hoping that some people will be scared to take this route. They don't want to get fined. And speaking of that, if you're making a lot of money reselling shoes and you get fined, usually it is a hefty fine, but you got to outweigh everything. If you're making a lot more on shoes than the fine itself, then these people are just going to continue. And whatever errors they made, they're going to fix those. So to sum it up, if this passes, I don't think anything will come of it. I think this is more so as a scare tactic and more than likely they'll just use it at their discretion. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hopefully this all makes sense. If you have any questions and I'm able to answer them, I'll make sure to follow up with a comment back at you. Moving on to Jordan brand and in the last video, which was the December 2021 Air Jordan release dates, I talked about the Air Jordan 1 Element Gore-Tex in Light Bone. At that time, it was rumored to release in December, initially December 1st, and they weren't on the sneakers app. So although they were rumored to release in December, I thought it was possible that they could get pushed until January. However, the other day, Nike added the shoes to the app and they confirmed the release date. So this pair will debut on December 16th and the retail price is 200. Another shoe that was featured in the previous video, we now have official photos of the Air Jordan 1 High OG handcrafted. At the time of shooting this video, they are not on the sneakers app. However, they will drop on the sneakers app and the pair is rumored to release on December 18th. The retail price will be 170. Like I mentioned in the last one, this pair definitely grows on me more and more. I do have a feeling that this will be a shoe if you miss out or decide to pass on that down the line, people may regret the price will be too high for anybody to wanna pay resale for them. That of course, if you really like them, but 
That's just my opinion. Let me know yours down below. Another pair that is expected to release this month is the Soulfly Air Jordan 1 Low. Now, we don't have any new information, but I did want to showcase these on feet images so you know how they look. At the time of shooting this video, they are rumored to release on December 17th. Currently, we don't know of a retail price, nor do we know the size range. And to be honest, I can appreciate what the inspiration is, how they use the Air Carnivore as well as the Bison SB Dunk Low. Those two shoes are really random to use on one, so I kind of want to know the history, like why they decided to put it on. Either way, they're okay. They're not great. If I miss out on them at retail, then I'm not getting them. The Air Jordan 5 Jade Horizon was expected to be one of many pairs to release this month, but due to shipping delays, we won't actually see the pair debut until 2022. Most of the retro releases will go up to 200 in 2022. However, it isn't known if this pair will be one of them. It was expected to debut this year, but like I mentioned, the shipping delays and initially the retail price was 190. So I'm a little curious if they go up $10. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they retail at 200. And again, another pair that's decent. It's growing on me a little more, not quite there yet. The shade of jade that's used across the upper is solid. I like that. The little bit of light pink kind of throws it off for me. But what I really like about the shoe is the aged look. That lands on the lace lock eyelets and the rubber outsole. I always love it when a shoe, even if it's new or old, has that old vintage look to them. So I think that aspect in itself makes me want to really like them, even though I'm not a huge fan of everything else. But either way, let me know your thoughts down below. Expect it to release February 2022. Unfortunately, no specific release date at this time. The retail price is currently set at 190 However, it's possible that they could retail at 200 a couple of videos back, I spoke on the Air Jordan 1 High OG Heritage. We actually saw a first look at the shoe. The images weren't good. I mean, one image was decent, but it was like a weird angle. The second one was horrible. But overall, we got to tell what was coming. Now, in this video, we have a detailed look. The images are nice and crisp, which makes me want them even more. So, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of this colorway. Personally, I think this is way better than the Travis Scott pair. I'm taking away it being a collaboration, just the color blocking. I know being a Travis in a fragment collab that usually steers people towards them more. Also for this pair, they are expected to be a GR, but as you know, ones aren't easy to obtain. They have a ton of hype no matter how many pairs release. And currently the release date is April 9th. It's very possible that it could get pushed back and the retail price will be 170. Another set of detailed photos. This time it's on the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Georgetown. Now I'm really excited for this pair and something I noticed on these images that I didn't notice prior is the tongue. Now the tongue, it has an aged look. And like I just mentioned, I'm a huge fan whenever a shoe features an aged look, a vintage style, whatever it may be, this has it. Also, believe it or not, the color blocking is like an OG. It was a sample that was produced back in 1985, the Air Jordan 1 Georgetown Hoyas. The only difference is with this pair and the sample is that instead of the Wings logo, we have Hoyas. So other details on this shoe includes college navy leather on the overlays, which hits the swoosh, tongue branding, and outsole. We got gray on the base, ankle, and laces, while white hits the wings logo and midsole. This pair is expected to release in February 2022. If I had to guess, more than likely around All-Star Weekend, typically that's when we see the Air Jordan 1 High 85 release. And the retail price will be 200 just a reminder, the Air Jordan 1 High 85, that retails at 200. The Air Jordan 1 High OG, that will still retail at 170. I'm still seeing some comments going around that people believe that the Air Jordan 1 High OG will go up to 200. That isn't true. It's going to stay at 170. We have a really, really big rumor that is going around right now. And that is that the Air Jordan 3 Fire Red will return in 2022 
with of course Nike Air branding. Now, this would be the first time that the shoe re-released with Nike Air. Originally, they released in 1988. This was one of four original colorways of the Air Jordan 3. We then saw the first retro, which took place in 2007, and the second retro that came out in 2013. In 2007 and 2013, this pair featured a Jumpman on the hill. And I think for the most part, the majority of us want to see the shoe released with Nike Air branding. Now, there's a few things I want to go over. I did initially state that this was a rumor. Usually, I don't post rumors or run with rumors because lately I've been seeing some wild ones going around. However, this comes from Mr. Unloved Ones. Now, he is a friend of mine, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is. Big Air Jordan 1 fan. However, he brings accurate information. I don't think I can ever recall him being wrong on something. So basically to me, his name holds weight. Now, the reason I'm still saying it's a rumor, even though he has said that they are returning, is for two reasons. One, we don't have a style code. I feel that's very, very important. And two, I talked to my guys and they won't know until next week. So there's a special meeting that's gonna go on. I really can't elaborate on that meeting. And from there, they'll know and then they'll relay the message to me. Now, just because that meeting isn't until next week doesn't mean that this info isn't true. More than likely, this is happening. But again, I just want to say that it's a rumor for now in the case that it doesn't. And of course, I haven't received confirmation from my guys. Anyways, this is huge news. Now, if Jordan Brand can bring back the Air Jordan 4 military blue, that would be great. I feel like I need to start a, a campaign of some sort, try to get some signatures or something and get it pushed along, get it noticed, I don't know. But I shouldn't be greedy because I am really excited about this shoe. I love the fire red Air Jordan 3. Another thing I hope for this shoe is the elephant print. Now, what you'll notice is on the OG, it's a lot lower. For some reason, I personally love that look. I know on the newer retros, they have it higher. Also, make it dark like this. Now, to wrap this up, we don't have any specific details. The rumor is fall 2022. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a Black Friday release or around that time, and no retail price as of yet. Let me know your thoughts on this pair possibly returning next year. You guys already know how I feel, so let me know down below. And that's going to do it for this video. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the red button below. It's been a long time since I've dropped three videos in a week, so I'm actually pretty excited about that. The channel has been moving forward greatly as far as subscribers go. It would be nice to try to hit 145,000 subs before 2022. So that should be like our mini goal. I think 150 would be a little out of reach, but hey, if we can do that, I'd be really appreciative. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Expect another video either Monday or Tuesday. It really depends how the news goes over the rest of the weekend. And again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.